Massively multiplayer online role-playing games are a combination of role-playing video games and massively multiplayer online games in which a very large number of players interact with one another within a world. They are often games hosted on a web browser. As in all RPGs, the player assumes the role of a character and takes control over many of that character's actions. MMORPGs are distinguished from single-player or small multiplayer online RPGs by the number of players able to interact together, and by the game's persistent world which continues to exist and evolve while the player is offline and away from the game. MMORPGs are played throughout the world. Worldwide revenues for MMORPGs exceeded half a billion dollars in 2005, and Western revenues exceeded one billion dollars in 2006. In 2008, Western consumer spending on subscription MMOGs grew to $1.4 billion. World of Warcraft, a popular MMORPG, had over 10 million subscribers as of November 2014. World of Warcraft's total revenue was $1.04 billion US dollars in 2014. Star Wars, The Old Republic, released in 2011, became the world's fastest growing MMO ever after gaining 1 million subscribers within the first three days of its launch. Common features, although modern MMORPGs sometimes differ dramatically from their antecedents, many of them share some basic characteristics. These include several common features, persistent game environment, some form of progression, social interaction within the game, in-game culture, system architecture, membership in a group, and character customization. Themes The majority of popular MMORPGs are based on traditional fantasy themes, often occurring in an in-game universe comparable to that of Dungeons & Dragons. Some employ hybrid themes that either merge or substitute fantasy elements with those of science fiction, sword and sorcery, or crime fiction. Still others draw thematic material from American comic books, the occult, and other genres. Often these elements are developed using similar tasks and scenarios involving quests, monsters, and loot. Progression in nearly all MMORPGs, the development of the player's character is a primary goal. Nearly all MMORPGs feature a character progression system in which players earn experience points for their actions and use those points to reach character levels, which makes them better at whatever they do. Traditionally, combat with monsters and completing quests for non-player characters, either alone or in groups, are the primary ways to earn experience points. The accumulation of wealth is also a way to progress in many MMORPGs, and again, this is traditionally best accomplished via combat. The cycle produced by these conditions, combat leading to new items allowing for more combat with no change in gameplay, is sometimes pejoratively referred to as the level treadmill, or grinding. The role-playing game Progress Quest was created as a parody of this trend. EVE Online trains skills in real time rather than using experience points as a meter of progression. In some MMORPGs, there is no limit to a player's level, allowing the grinding experience to continue indefinitely. MMORPGs that use this model often glorify top-ranked players by displaying their avatars on the game's website or posting their stats on a high score screen. Another common practice is to enforce a maximum reachable level for all players, often referred to as a cap. Once reached, the definition of a player's progression changes. Instead of being awarded primarily with experience for completing quests and dungeons, Collecting money and equipment will replace the player's motivation to continue playing, colloquially known as endgame gear. This set of empowered weapons and armor adds a competitive edge to both scripted boss encounters as well as player versus player combat. Player motivation to outperform others is fueled by acquiring such items and is a significant determining factor in their success or failure in combat-related situations.
Also, traditional in the genre is the eventual demand on players to team up with others in order to progress at the optimal rate. This sometimes forces players to change their real-world schedules in order to keep up within the game world. A good example of this is the need to trade items to achieve certain goals, or teaming up to kill a powerful enemy. Social interaction MMORPGs almost always have tools to facilitate communication between players. Many MMORPGs offer support for in-game guilds or clans. In addition, most MMOs require some degree of teamwork for parts of the game. These tasks usually require players to take on roles in the group, such as those protecting other players from damage, healing, damage done to other players or damaging enemies. MMORPGs generally have game moderators or game masters, who may be paid employees or unpaid volunteers who attempt to supervise the world. Some GMs may have additional access to features and information related to the game that are not available to other players and roles. Relationships formed in MMORPGs can often be just as intense as relationships formed between friends or partners met outside the game and often involve elements of collaboration and trust between players. Role-playing Most MMORPGs provide different types of classes that players can choose. Among those classes, a small portion of players choose to role-play their characters, and there are rules that provide functionality and content to this end. Community resources such as forums and guides exist in support of this playstyle. For example, if a player wants to play a priest role in his MMORPG world, he might buy a cope from a shop and learn priestly skills, proceeding to speak, act, and interact with others as their character would. This may or may not include pursuing other goals such as wealth or experience. Guilds or similar groups with a focus on role-playing may develop extended in-depth narratives using the setting and resources of the game world. Culture Over time, the MMORPG community has developed a subculture with its own slang and metaphor, as well as an unwritten list of social rules and taboos. Players will often complain about, grind, or talk about buffs and nerfs. Social rules exist for such things as invitations to join an adventuring party, the proper division of treasure, and how a player is expected to behave while grouped with other players. Debate rages in various gaming media over the long-term impact of video game overuse. The online gamers' anonymous forums are filled with stories of players that have neglected social, employment and, or family responsibilities in favor of their, virtual lives. System architecture Most MMORPGs are deployed using a client-server system architecture. The server software generates a persistent instance of the virtual world that runs continuously, and players connect to it via client software. The client software may provide access to the entire playing world, or further, expansions may be required to be purchased to allow access to certain areas of the game. EverQuest and Guild Wars are two examples of games that use such a format. Players generally must purchase the client software for a one-time fee, although an increasing trend is for MMORPGs to work using pre-existing, thin, clients, such as a web browser. Some MMORPGs require payment of a monthly subscription to play. By definition, massively multiplayer games are always online, and most require some sort of continuous revenue for maintenance and development. Some games, such as Guild Wars have disposed of the monthly fee model entirely, and recover costs directly through sales of the software and associated expansion packs. Still others adopt a micropayment model where the core content is free, but players are given the option to purchase additional content, such as equipment, aesthetic items, or pets. Games that make use of this model often have originated in Korea, such as Fliff and Maple Story. This business model is alternately called Pay for Perks or Freemium, and games using it often describe themselves with the term Free to Play. Depending on the number of players and the system architecture, an MMORPG might actually be run on multiple separate servers.
each representing an independent world, where players from one server cannot interact with those from another. World of Warcraft is a prominent example, with each separate server housing several thousand players. In many MMORPGs the number of players in one world is often limited to around a few thousand. But a notable example of the opposite is EVE Online which accommodates several hundred thousand players on the same server, with over 60,000 playing simultaneously at certain times. Some games allow characters to appear on any world, but not simultaneously, others limit each character to the world in which it was created. World of Warcraft has experimented with cross-realm interaction in PvP battlegrounds using server clusters or battle groups to coordinate players looking to participate in structured PvP content such as the Warsong Gulch or Alterac Valley Battlegrounds. Additionally, Patch 3.3, released on December 8, 2009, introduced a cross-realm looking for group system to help players form groups for instance content from a larger pool of characters than their home server can necessarily provide. History MMORPG is a term coined by Richard Garriott to refer to massive multiplayer online role-playing games and their social communities. The link between Garriott and the MMORPG term has been recognized by many scholars previous to this and related coinages. These games were generally called graphical muds. The history of MMORPGs traces back directly through the mud genre. Through this connection, MMORPGs can be seen to have roots in the earliest multi-user games such as Maze of War and MUD1. 1985 saw the release of a roguelike mud called Island of Kesme on CompuServe and Lucasfilm's graphical mud habitat. The first fully graphical multi-user RPG was Neverwinter Nights which was delivered through America Online in 1991 and was personally championed by AL President Steve Case. Other early proprietary graphical online RPGs include three on the Sierra Network, The Shadow of East Serbius in 1992, The Fates of Twinian in 1993, and The Ruins of Cordor in 1995. Another milestone came in 1995 as NSFNET restrictions were lifted, opening the internet up for game developers, which allowed for the first truly, massively, scoped titles. Finally, MMORPGs as defined today began with Meridian 59 in 1996, innovative both in its scope and in offering first-person 3D graphics, with the Realm Online appearing nearly simultaneously. Ultima Online, released in 1997, is often credited with first popularizing the genre, though more mainstream attention was garnered by 1999's EverQuest and Asheron's Call in the West and 1996's Nexus, The Kingdom of the Winds in South Korea. These early titles' financial success has ensured competition in the genre since that time. MMORPG titles now exist on consoles and in new settings. The current market for MMORPGs has Blizzard Entertainment's World of Warcraft dominating as the largest MMORPG, alongside other titles such as Final Fantasy XIV and Guild Wars II, though an additional market exists for free-to-play MMORPGs, which are supported by advertising and purchases of in-game items. This free-to-play model is particularly common in South Korean MMORPGs such as Maple Story, Rowan, Blood Feud, and Atlantica Online. Also, there are some free-to-play games, such as RuneScape and Tibia, where the game is free, but one would have to pay monthly to play the game with more features. Guild Wars, and its successor, Guild Wars 2, avoid some degree of competition with other MMORPGs by only requiring the initial purchase of the game to play. Development The cost of developing a competitive commercial MMORPG title often exceeded $10 million by 2003. These projects require multiple disciplines within game design and development such as 3D modeling, 2D art, animation, user interfaces, 
client, server engineering, database architecture, and network infrastructure. The front-end component of a commercial, modern MMORPG features 3D graphics. As with other modern 3D games, the front-end requires expertise with implementing 3D engines, real-time shader techniques and physics simulation. The actual visual content is developed by artists who typically began with two-dimensional concept art, and later convert these concepts into animated 3D scenes, models and texture maps. Developing an MMOG server requires expertise with client, server architecture, network protocols, security, and database design. MMORPGs include reliable systems for a number of vital tasks. The server must be able to handle and verify a large number of connections, prevent cheating, and apply changes to the game. A system for recording the game's data at regular intervals, without stopping the game, is also important. Maintenance requires sufficient servers and bandwidth, and a dedicated support staff. Insufficient resources for maintenance lead to lag and frustration for the players, and can severely damage the reputation of a game, especially at launch. Care must also be taken to ensure that player population remains at an acceptable level by adding or removing servers. Peer-to-peer -peer MMORPGs could theoretically work cheaply and efficiently in regulating server load. But practical issues such as asymmetrical network bandwidth, CPU-hungry rendering engines, unreliability of individual nodes, and inherent lack of security make them a difficult proposition. The hosted infrastructure for a commercial-grade MMORPG requires the deployment of hundreds of servers. Developing an affordable infrastructure for an online game requires developers to scale to large numbers of players with less hardware and network investment. In addition, the development team will need to have expertise with the fundamentals of game design, world building, lore and game mechanics, as well as what makes games fun. Non-corporate development Though the vast majority of MMORPGs are produced by companies, Many small teams of programmers and artists have contributed to the genre. As shown above, the average MMORPG development project requires enormous investments of time and money, and running the game can be a long-term commitment. As a result, non-corporate development of MMORPGs is less common compared with other genres. Still, many independent MMORPGs do exist, representing a wide spectrum of genres, gameplay types, and revenue systems. Some independent MMORPG projects are completely open source, while others feature proprietary content made with an open source game engine. The World Forge project has been active since 1998 and formed a community of independent developers who are working on creating framework for a number of open source MMORPGs. The Multiverse Foundation has also created a platform specifically for independent MMOG developers. Trends As there are a number of wildly different titles within the genre, and since the genre develops so rapidly, it is difficult to definitively state that the genre is heading in one direction or another. Still, there are a few obvious developments. One of these developments is the Raid Group Quest, or Raid, which is an adventure designed for large groups of players. Instance Dungeons Instance Dungeons, sometimes shortened to instances, are game areas that are copied for individual players or groups, which keeps those in the instance separated from the rest of the game world. This reduces competition, while all also reducing the amount of data that needs to be sent to and from the server, reducing lag. The Realm Online was the first MMORPG to begin to use a rudimentary form of this technique and Anarchy Online would develop it further. Using instances is a key element of gameplay. Since then, instancing has become increasingly common. The raids, as mentioned above, often involve instance dungeons. Examples of games which feature instances are World of Warcraft, The Lord of the Rings Online, EverQuest, EverQuest 2, Ion, Final Fantasy XIV. 
Guild Wars, Rift, RuneScape, Star Trek Online and DC Universe Online. Player-created content increased amounts of player-created content may be another trend. Use of licenses The use of intellectual property licensing, common in other video game genres, has also appeared in MMORPGs. 2007 saw the release of The Lord of the Rings Online, based on J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth. Other licensed MMORPGs include The Matrix Online, based on the Matrix trilogy of films, Warhammer Online, Age of Reckoning, based on Games Workshop's tabletop game of Star Wars Galaxies, Star Wars The Old Republic Champions Online and Age of Conan. Additionally, several licenses from television have been optioned for MMORPGs, for example Star Trek Online and Stargate Worlds. Console-based MMORPGs The first console-based MMORPG was Fantasy Star Online for the Sega Dreamcast. The first console-based open-world MMORPG was Final Fantasy XI for the Sony PlayStation 2. EverQuest Online Adventures, also on the PlayStation 2, was the first console MMORPG in North America. Although console-based MMORPGs are considered more difficult to produce, the platform is gaining more attention. Browser-based MMORPGs with the popularization of Facebook and microtransactions has come a new wave of Flash and HTML5-based MMORPGs that use the free-to-play model. They require no download outside of a browser and usually have heavily integrated social media sharing features. An example of a browser-based MMORPG is Freeware. Smartphone-based MMORPGs Smartphones with their GPS capabilities enable augmented reality games such as Ingress and the upcoming Pokemon Go.